that, let me. That's that's getting that. That's good. That's good. Just keep. You want to keep doing that. You want to keep doing that until you break past the sickness. You break past the tiredness. You break past the sin. You break past the problem, the discouragement, the disappointment. Of course, the blood takes care of the sin. Hallelujah. No other power will do. See, what you must understand is I, I love worship of all kinds. I, I love to sing the songs and hymns from 300 years ago. I don't mind singing many of the songs that are sang today, sung today by Heal Songs and other ministries. But see, I know there is a higher realm to go in. I know that there's a, 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 a place of deeper worship. How many of you would be willing to believe that? And I think most of you, you know, you can see, we give our, you know, I give myself to worship and praise. I love to worship. But I know I'm called. I keep being called to a higher realm of interaction. Because, see, we don't understand something very simple that Jesus said. He said... That the Father seeks, Father seeking people. Can you imagine Father seeking a person? I mean, I can understand me seeking Him. I can understand you seeking Him. But how about when you turn it around and He's seeking, uh, seeking a person, a type of people. God is seeking a type of person that I want to be. He said He seeks a person to worship Him in the Holy Spirit. Now, people come and they, try, they, they just try to... They try to plug in, and when there is an anointing, somebody's been given the anointing to, of a psalmist, anointing to sing, anointing to worship. A whole mass of people can join along with the song. It can be up there in a couple of phrases, and, and that's good, and that's, that's wonderful. No problem. But most of that's with the mind. And they're caught, they're caught away by the presence. There's no question about it. The presence is there. But most of it's just... It doesn't go real deep, if you understand what I mean. I'm not saying that there isn't a connection with the Holy Spirit. It just doesn't go as deep as Father wants it to go. He wants us to, you know, it's like, it's the best way to describe it is like the prophet Ezekiel, the Lord takes him to a river. He steps into the river and he's, it's ankle, ankle deep. And, you know, you, you have to say, well, do I want to just stay ankle deep? I mean, I'm in the river. Praise God to being in the river. I'm glad you're not on the bank. You know, I'm glad you're not out, you know, completely in the desert. At least you're by the river. And uh, you step into the river and you only ankle deep. But why would you be satisfied to stay there? Why? You don't have to be sick. You don't have to be tired. You don't have to be discouraged. You don't have to, to be defeated. I could give you the skill set or help you understand how to take a hold of the skill set tonight so that you can break past sickness and tiredness for the rest of your life. Yeah, I can, I, and I can, I can help you with discouragement. You can break past discouragement. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 Somebody said, well, do you have to be hysterically happy all the time? Well, why not? You certainly don't need to be terribly depressed or sorrowful or sad. Somebody said, how do you do that? See, it's a wellspring springing up. It's a supply that will not stop. You, all you have to do is say, I, I want this supply. I don't want it to stop. All you have to do, all you have to do. You know, how many people are sick here tonight? Some of you look like you're sick. Are you sick? Or how many just really tired? You're really tired. Just so I can know what I'm dealing with. I don't want to have false discernment based upon the expression of your face. Okay? So I want, you to, I want to help you. I want to help you. I want, I want you to come and bring a sacrifice to the Lord. I want you to be able to get past the things that would discourage you or things that would distract you or even things that would burden you. Tonight's not a burden night. 
Tonight, you got to come for a burden prayer meeting for that. The people go, <laughs> you had to come on another night for the burden night. Tonight is the Dagaras Daya Rai. Tonight's the Janjaya Dajaya. As far as I am concerned, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I'm really done with burdens. I'm really done with burdens. I'm, I'm, I'm done with that. Jesus said, everyone who's, who labors and is heavy laden, it sounds like a serious burden. You with me? Come unto me, and I shall give you rest. And this is the rest wherewith he has caused the weary to be refreshed. With stammering lips and with other tongues shall he speak unto this people. And that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. And I know that Satan has made a mockery out of it. And I know that people have made a religion out of it. Is yours to hook up with the front with the realms of joy unspeakable. To hook up with the realms of praise. To hook up with the realms of thanksgiving and the realms of rejoicing. I'm gonna tell you tonight. God has nothing against you. He's removed away the shame. He's removed away the sorrow. He's removed away the pain. He holds nothing against you. Don't let Satan lie to you and hold you back from this great news, this good news, this wonderful works of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. I, I just have to share what the Lord just showed me. Um, uh, maybe. It's okay. Actually, the, actually, the baby needs it. Now, I want, I want you to notice something just before, just before Katrina shares this vision. The baby did not start crying because I was hollering. <laughs> okay, I was just standing and worshiping, and I looked down, and the floor just became liquid gold. It was just shining, clear gold, like it's true. just beautiful. I mean, it's and, and then I look around, I'm looking at the floor, and I look around, and everyone in the place is in white garments, just glowing. This is true. And I look up at the front, and I see the worship team, and then I see that it's not just the platform, it goes up stairway, I mean stairway up and up, and behind them there's a chorus of angels. I mean, it's, it's not just them, you know, it's, it's the sound that you hear from them, but it's the sound of heaven, and, and these angels are just glorifying God their arms are outstretched and everyone in the place their arms are outstretched and up above us there's the the cherubim with their their horns and their harps I mean the place is filled I mean it's just above your heads I mean you look up and you see it it's, it's I, I, do you see it I mean it's this is true. no that I'm is, shaking like no, they, this, this is true this is that is exactly the realm that I go to step over into. See, that's the difference. What you what you see, what you what the Lord showed you, is exactly the realm that I go to, oh, because I know it's there. I know this realm is ever present with us, no matter where we're at, and especially in the midst of the church. And I refuse to stay over in a human realm. So, like what what God was showing me is by the door. There's an angel of the Lord. He's standing there. He's like the, he's like the checker guy, you know, yeah, there is a and checker he, guy. he's like, leave your garments of heaviness here. 
Come on you now. don't come in the place with your garment on, of heaviness man. because you're not going to match with what's happening here. Come on, Dr. You have to have your garment of praise. Enter into his courts with thanksgiving. Enter into his house with praise. You're not going to come in here with a garment of heaviness, so take it off and leave it at the door. You come in here glorifying the Lord Jesus. Father, I ask you to increase this anointing to be able to see and speak what you see in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Can you, can you hear it? You hear how the Lord is passionate about it? Isn't it wonderful that there's it's a mouth of two or three witnesses? Isn't that beautiful? I mean, that God, the Holy Ghost, really, you don't, maybe you don't understand this because all you see is the, my face. God demands this. So you see my face demanding it and you're going, why is he upset? I'm not upset. I'm speaking on behalf of the kingdom of God. I'm not even doing my own thing here, man. I'm just declaring what I'm hearing out of heaven. I'm just declaring that realm that God is speaking right by his Holy Ghost. And, it, and we, we I, God, the Holy Spirit, so desires to fill you with the spirit of wisdom and revelation so you can see. You want to go ahead. I, I just feel like a lot of people in here might be thinking, like, this isn't my reality. Yeah, that's great for you, and that's just not reality. But you know what? It is reality. Your eyes are not open. You have to open your eyes to see that heavenly reality. Mm. It's, it's mm. a different realm. Mm. You walk around in the natural all day. You're looking mm. at the ground. You're looking at your circumstances. You're bummed out. You come in here. You bring that with you. It's not going to work. Mm -mm. You think you're experiencing, you know, a reality that is is just life, you know. But no, life is a higher realm. <laughs> There's a different level that you step into. You can't come in the place not in that realm. You're not going to fit. You're going to feel weird. <laughs> No, oh, come on. I'm just so blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. And, and this, what I'm so encouraged about and I'm so, I'm so certain of is that Father wants to open up the eyes of everyone so that everyone can see. You can be seated. The Lord wants everybody to be able to see. Be, look, look, look. Just stay with me, David. You've got to follow me, man. You have to follow me. You follow me and the anointing will increase in your life to worship. So stay with me. Because, I mean, as I receive, so I speak, so I give. I mean, I didn't start this on my own. I received from those whom God anointed. Hallelujah. And I just stayed hooked up with them, men. And so we just stay hooked up with one another. And then, then that's how the supply of the Spirit comes. I realize, I, you know, I realize that no one really is there going to be able to get this without the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I realize that God retains all right to revelation, that you're going to have to let Father open up your eyes to cause you to, to see. But here's what it takes. Here's what I am addressing. It takes hunger and thirsting. And so what happens is the word of God goes forth to, to, to the word of God goes forth to stir up your appetite, wet, wet your whistle. <laughs> Stir up your appetite. Yeah. Just so you can, just tired and ain't they? Yeah. Now, this is the result of someone who came in a little tired, a little weary, a little overwhelmed. But just when the end of God started beginning to get hooked up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, that's the presence of the Lord. That isn't a man, Brad, trying to please the pastor and being happy. None guy to see. That's just touch. That's just a touch of heaven. This is what Papa has for us all the time. These are, look, these are the things that Satan and, and, and the cares of this life are trying to prevent us from having. You decide whether or not it's going to be that way. You decide whether or not it's going to be that way. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> yes. Okay. You know, um, I, I was seeing a different thing at the same time. 
uh, that uh, everyone was coming, like having like, before getting into the church, like was evil spirit attacking every person. And then when we, you, you notice that when, when we've been praising in tongue, it was, it was like in three levels. Uh, the first level when we was uh, praying like this, mm -hmm. this, I saw, I saw in my spirit, not with my eye, I saw like we've been a, like a team encouraging our angels and they've been fighting the demons. And every time we're praying in tongue, they're defeating them and crushing them down. And then we went mm -hmm. to another level when we start to be praising the Lord and thanking the Lord. We're really declaring victory and giving the praise to the God. And then like, like the Holy Spirit starts, you know, we, we start to feel relaxed and happy and joy. And then I saw with my eye when we were thanking the Lord, there was a, a few demons that was, you know, their head down and they've been like fleeing like with shame, big shame. So we was encouraging and, you know, because the Lord said the war is not ours. We're not the fighter. We're not the one who fight the enemy. The enemy, but the, this is his uh, army or this is his war. His, his and, battle. His battle, and he's sending his and and this is his team. His his soldier. So, forgive my language, <laughs> my English, but this is his soldier. So he's sending his soldier to defeat our enemy. So when we are we was doing that, we was encouraging our army to defeat our enemies. That's what I felt the whole three mm -hmm. levels. Well, you, you know, let me just say this. Let me just say this. The reality of it is, this Father has given us the authority. He's given us authority. Let me show you how he's given us the authority. Are you with me? Christ Jesus, being exalted above all principalities and powers and might and dominion, has also caused us to come into the same place with him and given us the same word of faith and word of authority that he has. Now what happens is we choose whether or not we are going to hook up with the Holy Ghost. We choose whether or not we're going to receive that strength and divine power and ability. And I, you know, I, I, can, I can understand you know, what, you're, what Manuel is saying, but reality of it is it's so simple. It comes down to something so simple. Will I participate? Will you as an individual participate with what the Holy Spirit is doing? The question is to you. If you will, did you know that in the atmosphere, within the realms of the God of this world, within the realms of humanity that is outside of Christ Jesus, there is only the propensity to rebel. Man just naturally rebels. Just rebels. And what happens if we come under the influence of the God of this world, ultimately the enemy you know, I know a lot of people go around, they always talk about how the enemy's defeating them and the enemy's on them. The enemy has never defeated me, he's never on me. I talk to some people, they're always battling, they're always in a spiritual battle, uh, and, and you know, we're, we're going through it. Well, you know what? Unless you're strong, unless you've been filled with the strength of the Lord and the power of his might, I can understand constantly being overwhelmed. But when you're filled with the strength of the Lord and the power of his might, which is a result of being filled with the Spirit, it's almost like white noise. You know what? It's just like, you got to really listen. And you can hear this like, you know what I'm saying? It's like a little white noise. <laughs> and that's only if I like really try to hear. That's all right. This is it. it. There's, that doesn't mean to say that Satan is and as a roaring lion going about seeking, seeking whom he may devour. Whom we are to resist steadfast in the faith because that's the other side of it. He is a formidable foe. There's no question about it. We can see that's obvious. A lot of people are being taken out. A lot of people are under the influence of the enemy. There's no question about it. Hallelujah. Mang rumbanda desde prete. But it, the beautiful, wonderful thing is this one, this one, this realm where we just as a result of being filled with the Holy Ghost, works wonders in the midst of our lives, works wonders in the midst of the church. 
Hallelujah. Because we in a glorious church, dear people. Literally, we are in a glorious church. We look, look, I'm in heaven. I'm not in hell. I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven. I'm in a place where Satan has no right to exist. And, and that is the church, and that's what we call the church to come and be. When you look at the church and who the church is, the church is expressed to be, in Hebrews chapter 12, as the very throne room of God, the throne, the throne room that we see in the book of Revelation where there's, a crist, as it were, a sea of crystal glass expanding out before it. I imagine that sea of crystal Glass, being able to look down into eternity past and then look into eternity future as you're looking up at the face of the Father. I mean, I, I can't even, you know, you can't even, words fail to express. But we're right now, we're right now there in our heavenly realm where all power and authority is to turn rocks into gold. Huh? What's the difference? Go get a, going out of fish mouth or turn a rock into a piece of gold. Why well, people are so consumed with their problems and their problems ultimately become their gods and defeats them. When all the time there was provision, and then I'm not necessarily saying you turn a rock into gold, but I'm, nothing's impossible to them to believe. And I mean, if you can't get provision anywhere else, just pick the, th pick the thing up, set it on the, on the, you know, on the shelf and start going after it. Father, you know I need provision. And you, my provider. And I know you always provide by way of a, a supernatural miracle. So whatever it takes to get past your problem, I'm not going to have any. I have the answer. How can I have a problem when they have the answer? Christ Jesus is the answer. Hallelujah. To recognize, to recognize that the place is filled with the angels of the Lord. I do not believe that Satan has the right to appear before the presence of the Father anymore. Everything's been changed. I believe that, the, I believe that Satan's been cast out. There's been a complete division. Jesus said, now is the prince of this, of this world cast out. That's what he said. He said it three times. Three times. Now is the, God, now is the prince of the power of the air. Now is the prince of this world judged. Somebody said, well... How can he be cast out and how can he be judged and we still be able to reconcile Ephesians chapter 2, 2, that he's the God of this world, the spirit that works in children's disobedience? Because there's two parallel worlds going on right now. There's a world of darkness, the kingdom of darkness, and there is the kingdom of Christ Jesus, the dear son. And God wants you to be translated out of this world into that realm of the heavenlies. Where are you living out days of heaven upon the earth? Where, where, and and there the greatest expression of heaven on the earth right now is the church. The church. The body of Christ. To where that the church is supposed to be just like going to a Jesus meeting. I believe that God right now is beginning to move in churches that, have, that as it were, shut down the move of God. And I, knew, I know why they shut down the move of God as it were. They shut down the move of God because of an offense. Of an offense. Of an offense that happened with Catherine Coleman, an offense that happened with Lonnie Frisbee, and I could go on naming some other names. And they started pulling back, saying, no, 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 no. We don't want to be associated with that because of the offense of wrongdoing, of things that weren't right. And they begin to withdraw. In doing so, they begin to withdraw from the Holy Ghost. But what God is doing is he's bringing it back around. And there's a stirring of revival going on in the midst of the people who back in the 70s pulled whole denominations, whole groups that were born in the fire of God, pulled back from the move of the Spirit. Because of all the flakiness, because of all the wrongdoing, because of all the mixture. But God's God... Father has a purpose, his heart set on glorifying the name of his only begotten son. And the church represents Jesus. And Jesus is the representative of the church. Amen. To understand this realm. You know, when, you know here's, here's the reality of it is. When you, when you in the church, when you in Christ Jesus, you in the church. When you in the church, you in Christ Jesus. That is the fundamental cardinal doctrine of the church for 2,000 years. 
2,000 years. Uh-huh. People are trying to drift away from that, but still the church is in Jesus and Jesus is in the church. And as soon as somebody begins to participate with the things of the world, then ultimately they've been given over to Satan because that's, the world is his realm. The world is his realm. And that's why Paul said that when there's people that are in the church and they continually walk in disobedience and sin and they won't be instructed or corrected, give them over to Satan. They're already in his realm. So just make it known that they're in his realm. Publicly make it known that they're in his realm. And I know that, and that's scary to people, but I'm telling you right now, the discipline of the church is there because reality of it is so many things have been allowed to run interference, and I think really more by human beings than by demon spirits. Although demon spirits are behind those things that human beings are doing. You know, and here in this place, I know what's going on. It isn't like tonight. There have been people who've been among us who've lived out sinful lives full of iniquity that ultimately reflect on the church, which ultimately reflect on Jesus. But I'm not talking about that. Okay? The Lord deals with everybody in their time. But I'm talking to, what I'm talking about tonight is I'm talking about people who just never really understood how to recognize the attacks of the enemy and how and, 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 and to shut it down. How to rather yield over to the disposition of those things which God is doing and participate with them in his glorious, in the realms of the glorious church. I want you to open your Bibles with me real quickly to John, to Ephesians chapter 3. I, I want you to think about, I want you to think about for a moment being in a Jesus meeting. Where Jesus is multiplying the loaves and the fishes. Where Jesus is healing everyone who comes into the place. Everybody, no matter what their problem is, they're getting healed. Huh. I want you to think about Jesus as the King of kings and as the Lord of heaven sitting at the throne by the right hand of the Father in the holies of holies. That overwhelming, glorious, captivating presence of the holies of holies. A being in the presence of the living God in every dimension of his fullness. Because that's what the church is described by Paul to be. The fullness of him that filleth all things. So in reality, you can see then by measure that the church somehow has been stopped as the church has been held back because we don't see that expression of the fullness of God's glory and holiness and power and beauty that causes Holy Ghost conviction that brings true repentance, that brings the change of life where every sickness, every sin, every disease, every physical and spiritual thing is cured. The overwhelming presence of God that captivates the hearts of men that breaks off deception so everybody can see what's really present. Not just one person in the meeting saying, my goodness, we're standing on, we're standing on gold pavement here. Angels are all around. The heavenly, the, the heavenly realm is here with us now. That is the, that is the living reality that you and I should everyone be aware of. So when we begin to think of the church as is described by God to be where all the miracles are, where all the signs or wonders are, to be where those who are his mouthpieces, the instruments of his praise, those who declare his word by prophecy and revelation and knowledge, his apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers, all these things that he's placed in the midst of the church, the fullness of Christ Jesus, the fullness of the power of God the Father, the working of the Holy Ghost. And we look at where we're at, something should stir within a heart, a passion, not a discouragement, that's demonic. That is demonic. 
And it, that demonic realm, I have to help you understand something, plays off of the realm of self-interest. Because self, the pride of men say, oh, I'm not being, I'm not living up, I'm not measuring up, I didn't get an A. Because that's the way we trained. Huh? Oh, I failed. Well, if you failed, run to Jesus. If you fail or if you falter, run to Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then consecrate yourself. I mean, I, had, I, I wrote this little song. I mean, I wrote this little song as an intercession for the church tonight before I got here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this little song to you. Because it, I just was, I was praying for his house. Who seems to, seems to feel overwhelmed and separated. Seems to feel unworthy. We worthy. A big part of faith and moving in faith and cooperating with God is boldness and confidence. If you want to flow in the gifts of the Spirit, you got to be bold and confident. You can't be intimidated. You can't feel condemnation. You, you, you've got to be certain. You've got to, be, you've got to have this almost like, like childlike, reckless faith, as it were. To just know I can go do this. Just grab me, give me the microphone. I've got something to say. The power of God is here to work miracles, and I'm going to be his instrument right now, kind of thing. Huh? Because you're just all excited. I mean, somebody said, well, they got zeal without knowledge. I'd rather have zeal without knowledge than knowledge without zeal. <laughs> Give me a church full of people of zeal without knowledge instead of a church filled with people of knowledge without zeal. Huh? I want the zeal of the Lord to consume me. I'd rather have both. Amen. Hallelujah. But I tell you right now, I have witnessed in my life people with zeal that had more zeal than knowledge do far more than the people that had knowledge without zeal over and over again and then heard the reports of it over and over again and their books written about it. They didn't hardly know anything about God, didn't hardly know anything about the Bible, didn't know, hardly know anything about what most people would consider good, solid foundational doctrines, but there are signs, wonders, and miracles in their life. Because they were bold and confident enough and childlike enough just to step out there and believe God, God said to do it, and here we go. Amen. Huh? And some of them couldn't even speak well like tis, t'other, and the, you know. Went, meant to go one way, went the t'other. <laughs> Hallelujah. Kind of thing. Power of God, though, in their life. Power of God. Power of God. Just simple-minded. Hallelujah. Just simple-minded when it comes to the things of the Spirit. I pray you get single-minded and simple-minded when it comes to the things of the Spirit. Huh? I'm going to tell you right now, Caleb was able to pass the test. I don't believe you have to have, I don't believe you have to have a, some, you know, lower level of stupidity to get it. I just think you have to have a right heart. I think you have to have a right heart and get your, get your logic out of it and get your estimation out of it. Logic doesn't belong with the logos. I'm going to say it again. Logic don't belong with the logos. I'm going to say it again. Logic don't belong with the logos. I'm going to say it again. Logic, logic cannot understand the things of the spirit. Huh? Because they spiritually discern. I'm going to say that logic is equal to the natural man and the natural mind. I'm going to say that logic, I'm going to say that all the spies that brought back a all the spies that brought back an evil report, those guys all got an A. They operated in logic. They were right. It was the guys that didn't operate in, lo lo didn't operate in log logic. They operated in the logos. Those are the ones who, were, who, who got it. Those are the ones who had faith. Those are the ones who exalted God's word above everything else that they believe. God's exalted his word above his name. You and I got to exalt his word above everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You, Lord I'm, I'm gone, but I'll it to you. So that's why Caleb was able to say 40 years later, I'm as strong today as I was then. I'm as strong today as I was when I came back and said, we are well able to do it. Let us do it at once. Let there be no delay. We are well able to do it, to overcome them. Do it now. Let's do it now. So he comes back, you know, like his old 82-year-old guy. He said, give me this mountain. I, and, and that mountain was the most fortified mountain because it was the mountain that was occupied by the, the giants that existed in the, in, the, in, the, in the land in that day. And Caleb said, I could take care of that. That's my mountain. 
And there's a whole lot more to that story. I don't want to get off in it. There's a whole lot more. It's a burial place. Of, it's the place that Abraham bought. The burial place of Sarah. It's the purchased possession. It goes on and on, but I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm trying not to get into that. I love God's Word. I love the Logos, the Word of God. This is what he said. This is what he declared. This is what he said. I want for you. Mark, I want this for you. I read the Bible directly to me first, not to you. Then I read it to, to you after I partake of it. I go, I bite into that big old juicy grape. I go, wow, this is good. Taste this. And people are like, no, 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 it's great. Eat it. It's ours. God said it's ours. I don't care what the opposition looks like. I don't care what the, I don't care what the situations present themselves to be. Hallelujah. The church, the glorious church. What God described the church to be is what it is. And when I am convinced that that is what it is, and then I get to get glimpses. I've had glimpses like the Lord gave a glimpse to Katrina tonight. I've had glimpses in visions. I've had glimpses of actually participating. I've had glimpses of actually being raptured in that realm. I've actually seen and then also heard of all the great things that God did in the midst of his church. My mama used to tell me that the church that she grew up in as a little girl and this into a young woman, that many times the glory of God was so thick you could not see across the aisle of the church. What came out of that? Not only was there great signs and wonders and miracles and the demonstration of the power of God and the proof that Jesus is who he says he is and the glory of the Holy Spirit free to do all the wonderful things that he does when he heals people, when he's free to move, to liberate people, to break off the strongholds, to establish them in the faith, to establish purity and holiness, a love of God, a hating of evil. But also out of that, God raises up the ranks of his champions, the mighty men and women. And so, so many great servants of the Lord came out of that ministry, out of that church. Because there was people that was devoted to allowing the church to be what God described the church to be. They wouldn't have it any other way. Won't have it any other way. I will not stop. I can't force anybody else, but I can force me. I can say it will not be any other way. I won't have it any other way. We are supposed to be full of the Holy Ghost in the midst of his church. We're supposed to open up our mouth and begin to praise when, when by the spirit of the living God as though it's issues of, of, of the rivers of life coming out of us. My prayer must be like incense being offered. Yes. Amen. So I give myself over that realm because I'm not going to have it any other way. See, I, the zeal of the Lord has consumed me. Huh? And so that's how we preach, or that's what's coming out of our mouths. And that's what many people will come and they say, we can't bear to hear it, and they'll stop up their ears. And then, uh, because God is demanding a sacrifice to be offered in righteousness, we begin to address wrong behavior, wrong dispositions, wrong attitudes, and then people get even that much more offended. Ha, <laughs> ha, and the spirit of offense races through the ranks, ravage, ravishing, eating up, dividing, and scattering. Not the word of the Lord. Offen spirits of offense who are offended by the word of the Lord. Huh? But his word is like a fire. And it does consume the chaff. His word, is, his word will come and the moving of the Holy Ghost will be like a wind. It'll blow the chaff away. And Jesus is the one who's throwing it up in the air in the midst of his church. I'm going to participate with that. You know why? Because I know what happens if you do not weary in well-doing. You get to reap. I know I am going to be a part of the glorious church that Father demands. He's laboring. He demands it. He, he, he sees that I'm teamed up with him in this, that I'm a covenant partner with him in his purpose, not some, per, per, you know, peripheral peripheral purpose the purpose to glorify the name of Jesus Christ <laughs> to
to participate with the glorious church that only begins to really be manifested when every one of God's people are willing to be members in the body of Christ, in particular, in covenant first with God and then in covenant with one another, giving themselves over to this realm of walking in the spirit of holiness. People have misunderstood holiness. They made holiness something it isn't. Holiness doesn't exist out of walking in the Holy Ghost. And there's a manifestation that you're walking in the Holy Ghost. It's listed over and again. If you what it looks like to walk in the spirit. There's whole holiness movements that have just turned so bitter and so sour. And they just mean, cantankerous people. Always got a problem with somebody. And tell me that's God. That ain't God. That's the devil. That's demon spirits. Having set themselves up in the house of the Lord. And Jesus said, that's what it's like. Says the kingdom of heaven is like unto a seed. Small seed, mustard seed, small seed, but it grows into a big tree. And all the fowls of the air come lodging its branches. Amen. Huh? Amen. The Father's going to have his glorious church nonetheless. Just because people are doing what's wrong, and just because there's been wrong representations of the movings of God, there's been a lot of flakiness and silly things. Satan isn't going to be able to stop and shut down that wonderful, glorious, majestic manifestation of the divine power of God where the blind see, the crippled walk, the heart is changed, demon-possessed are delivered, those who are tormented in their mind and spirit set free. Oh, and the, and the place is supercharged with the love of God and the joy of God and a peace that passes understanding. It's so intense you don't want to leave the building. We were with a guy from Nigeria, Daniel and I was, the other day. We just met him and I said, well, I said, I said, well, who all do you know in Nigeria? He said, well, what do you mean, you know? And I said, well, you know Pastor Chris? Oh, yeah, I know Pastor Chris. Uh, I starts going off on Pastor Chris and, yeah. I said, well, do you know TB? TB. Yeah, TB Joshua. He's the mightiest man of God in the earth. He's going off. The presence of God that is there. And all the people that are fed, and all the widows that are taken care of, and all of the single mothers with babies that are, are ministered to and taken care of, and all the signs and wonders that take place. Come on, man. People all upset because TV Joshua goes and swim in the river that the alligators are in. Anybody else jumps in there, they got to get eaten up by an alligator. And so he, because he can swim in the water where the alligators are, supposedly he's a witch doctor. Because as soon as you got any power, you're a witch doctor. Well, then well, where's God's power? Where's God's power? I believe the United States of America can have well, I'll say holds the key to all of Europe being shaken with the power of God. I can see it. You know how I can see it? Because as soon as there was a little rumble at Brownsville, Pensacola, look at all the Europeans came. Mm -hmm. So many people were Europeans. As soon as there was a little rumble over there in Florida... Look at all the people that came from Europe. And look at all the disappointment. What is that? Satan trying to run interference? Trying to leave people hopeless and despairing? Oh, we had hoped that it was. We had hoped that he was the Christ. Right? But they took him and crucified him. And they're all, the hearts all overwhelmed. What's going to change that? The appearing of Jesus. The appearing of Jesus. What happens? Oh, my mom go but you can come sit down. What happens in Jesus? What happens when Jesus is standing, seen in our midst? Mm -hmm. You know, there was all these rumors and all these tales from different people and this different uh, folks in the, the different uh, armies during the Six Day War. Uh, they saw. They thought they saw the appearance of Moses over Israel. That's what was described by some. As though God was fighting for Israel during the Six-Day War. That may very well be true. I don't know. I wasn't there. I didn't see it. I don't have any Bible to support it. 
I do know God was involved in the reformation of Israel as a nation. I do know that. That's a miracle. And anybody can see that. So I would doubt in that sense that that miracle took place, that God could be manifested. But I know where he really wants to be manifested. I know where he wants, really wants to be revealed. I know where, where people need to see Christ Jesus, the living God, right now in the midst of his church. But we expect that the Holy Spirit is going to cooperate with us when we're doing things that have nothing to do with him whatsoever. He will not mix with that. I wish I were a more anointed man of God to tell you these things so that you could immediately be convinced of them and participate. <laughs> but I'm going to keep pressing in for a greater anointing so that your ears will be unplugged and that your eyes will be open. But perhaps you go ahead and you'll get real earnest with me while you're waiting me for me to get more anointed. You'll get so passionate that you yourself will take a hold of God so that your ears will pop open and your eyes will be anointed so that you may hear what I'm hearing and see what I'm seeing while I'm waiting to get to a greater anointing to communicate these things which my ears have heard and my eyes have seen. Hallelujah. Because people, we're being, we, we must be passionate. We must be purposeful people concerning the, the heart and desire of our Heavenly Father. If we are truly those who say, Father, I'm living to do your will. Well, I know what his will is. His will is that he wants his son glorified in the midst of his church. I dare say that few of you went to work sleepy as you are right now. Because they would send you on home, wouldn't they? Probably say, just go home, go get a rest. Right? Well, why, why does, what happens? What is that dynamic? And once again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not schooling anybody. And then I'm not, you know, telling you to turn the water into wine. <laughs> to prove, or to turn the stone into bread. To prove that you have an anointing. I'm not doing it. I'm just saying, where is that Glory. Where is that touching? Where are you? Where is it that are you touching heaven and heaven touching you? And to what degree can you touch heaven so that heaven can touch you? And will you allow that to be increased in your life tonight and not wait till some day in the future, but say, I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about this. Yes. I mean, how can we run all over the world and tell other people about something we don't even have? Come on. True. Huh? True. Why? Go tell everybody about the power and the glory of God and how the Father wants to do these wonderful things. And wait a minute. What were you doing back home? Are you listening to me? Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I want, you to work, I want you to walk with me through, real quickly in Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 3. God's going to do this. Yes. Father stirring the hearts of people. Yes. You know what's going to happen? You know what could very well happen? Let me tell you what could very well happen. The people who have really been viewed as those that have been against the Holy Ghost could actually become the people who step way over into the realms of heaven beyond those who said they were hungry for the things of the Holy Ghost. This is the way it can happen. You know why? Because God's looking for passionate, desperate hearts. And sometimes people who, have, who are in that condition who, as I was describing, were offended and drew back away from the move of God because of the offense, because they did not want to be categorized with the wrongdoing, yet always had a, a moving in their spirit to really want to lay hold on the truth of divine power and have the reality of his manifest glory. Suddenly they get to a place where they can't take it anymore more of their hunger so deep, the passion so real that just suddenly they take hold of that which is available to everyone. Many people, as it seems, have been in the Pentecostal movement and it's like the Holy Spirit has become commonplace, the move of God is just something that is, you know, turned into uh, things that I can't even begin to articulate. It's just so strange and so far from what it's supposed to be. And they believe that they have everything that you're supposed to have, and yet they find themselves potentially in a place where they're not clothed, they're naked, where they're not rich, they're poor, where they can't see, they're blind. 
I mean, that's how Jesus ministered to the church at the Laodiceans. Right? In fact, that I, I'm really praying right now and about turning, if the Lord allows me, turning Wednesday night to, to minister more on the book of Revelation just because I don't feel like I, need, I, I can wait to do it on Friday nights because i got so much to do right now in the school of the Spirit and so much to do in terms of order in the house. And, and there's such a needful... There's such a needy situation that we find ourselves in dealing with the reality of what Satan is strategically planning to do and what the earth right now is moving fast towards. We need to be aware lest we entrapped by it. We need to be sober and recognize that the day is evil and there's only one way to redeem the time. And that is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and the Holy Ghost song. And stay with it. Don't get bored. Don't get tired. Stay with it till the breakthrough comes. So I watch people fall off. They start getting bored. They start getting tired. They start, they don't, they don't know how to press in. They come right up against that wall at where it's just, the inspiration's not there. You know what the wall is? The wall? Have you ever felt the wall? Of course you have. I see it on your face. You feel the wall. The inspiration not there. You know what I do? I walk right through the wall. I just walk right through the wall. Everybody comes up against that wall where it seems like the inspiration is not there. And it's just like your mouth is moving, but there's no inspiration behind it. Press through the thing. And I'm going to tell you, you'll go right over into the realms of glory. And why do we, why do, we do those? Why do we press through? Because we know the church, what the church is, and we want to participate with the church. I want to be a part of the church. The church is the fullness of him that filleth all things. The church is the body of Christ. The church is the place where all the signs, wonders, and miracles of Jesus Christ now exist. The church is that realm, that, that glorious thing that the Holy Spirit is in absolute and complete and total control over. I don't want to be part of the church. You can't be a part of the church because you have a shingle in a building and chairs. Huh? You know, Oh, sickness, go out of that body now. Your foul spirit of sickness and disease. I curse you and I command you, come out of that body right now. In the name of Jesus. Out of that body right now. Yes. Now, in Jesus' name. Your foul spirit of sickness, I command you to go. I break the power of this fever right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know why I love to do that? Because I feel the anointing so strong. The anointing is so strong when I pray for it, lay hands on people, I can hardly walk away. It's so much fun. Hallelujah. Anytime you participate with God, you get filled with the Holy Ghost. The more you do so, the more you keep His Word in your mouth and you confess His Word, you speak His Word, you declare His Word, you activate your faith or you, make your, your, you cause your faith to be effectual by the acknowledgement of every good thing that is in you. You just by the speaking, just by the declaration of that word by the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth speaking, the word of truth out of your mouth, right from your belly. Huh? Hallelujah. Rivers flowing from the throne of God. <laughs> right out of your innermost being. Hallelujah. Fountains flowing from the throne of God. Overflowing in my life through love. From our bellies pouring forth his word. Fountains flowing from the throne of God. That's the song the Lord gave me when he gave me the name for this church. He gave me the name for this church in 1983. That's what Papa expects it to happen. He wants his word to abide. He, says, he told me, he said, if my word abides in you and you abide in me, 
You'll ask whatever you will, and I'll do it. That's it. <laughs> Am I going to be something different because a bunch of different people came along and said we need to do it another way? No. My goodness, then you need to change the name of the building, get another pastor <laughs> kind of thing. Because I'm telling you, and let me go be whatever what God told me to be. You know, praise God. I'm not going to stop along the way. I'm not going to slow down in pursuit, past pursuit of that which Jesus died for us to have, who suffered, bled, and died. Somebody said to me, can I go to another church? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Can I go to another church and be right with God? Sure. Because you don't want to stay around here and with a problem and create more problems. Huh? You got to go deal with yourself till you get right. I mean, it's like, you know, it's, you know, come on. It's going to church should be like going to heaven. If you don't feel like you're going to heaven when you come here, you need to go find yourself a place that feels like heaven when you go there because that's what the church is supposed to be. And you're never going to hook up with the faith of it and the confidence of it and the boldness of it until that's in your heart. Do you feel that? God wants you to feel that. He wants you to have that in your spirit and in your heart. I'm going to heaven, yippee. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There be singing, there be dancing, there be the shouts of praises in their mouth. There be signs and wonders, the glorious appearing of God will be there. That, that's the only way you can come up to the house of God in faith with the right heart and a right sacrifice and a right disposition. <laughs> oh, mighty God. There's two parallel churches right now. There's one that is fast on the road to apostasy, and there's another that's fast on the road to glory. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I was sitting with a number of wonderful men of God one day discussing this, and, you know, and I, and I, I just sit there and just got a download from heaven, just got a revelation on it because I had so almost conceptualize that they were sequential events. The, 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 the first event would be there's the glorious church and then all of a sudden there would be the rise of the apostate church. And the Lord caused me to realize, right out of my, I'm talking, it goes right out of my mouth. No, they run in parallel to each other. And, 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 they're in, you know, you, <laughs> the only thing that is going to make the difference for you is how passionate you are about having the things that the word of God describes. Must you have a participation with the church where all the fullness of God is being made manifest, where the rivers of the spirit of the living God are pouring forth out of God's people, where there's, where there's, where there's a rushing mighty wind and cloven tongues of fire, where there's tongues and interpretation of tongues, where there's the power of God arresting every heart, where there's visions continually going on and revelation where you're being stricken with the spirit of the living God to where the, everything about your life has changed. You constantly find yourself leaving the place having been entrusted with more, having been filled up with more, having been counted worthy, as Paul said. Having been counted worthy and Father able to fulfill His good pleasure, His will with the work of faith and power through our lives. The powerful working faith of Jesus Christ. This is what we we're passionate about. Call me what you want. Huh? Say what you want. Make it something other than it is. Get lost in the details of us dealing with your problems and issues. Or see the bigger picture that we all must conform to his will. That we all must be willing to yield ourselves to the Holy Ghost and do it His way. And understand the very fundamentals of things that He's asking of us. Not to turn the water into wine, but to rejoice with a shout and with a song and with the praise. And to sing the hymn and the, song, and the psalm, the prophetic song and the spiritual song. The hymn that captures the move of God. I like it. Don't you like that? The hymn. Take my life and let it be consecrated. Lord, do you captivate it. It, 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 it? it captured a move of God in the 1880s. A move of consecration. We can go through a whole list of things. For me, I sang this song to you, fountains flowing from the throne of God, overflowing in my life through love. From my bellies. 
pouring from my belly, pouring forth his word. Fountains flowing from the throne of God. I am a child of the living God. My abiding place is his rest. That captures a move of God from my life. It's a hymn for me. I never wrote it down, but I've, sing, I've, I've sang the song since 1983. Psalms, prophetic songs, the new song, hallelujah. The barastetaramengdekalama, spiritual song. Because there is no other definition of the spiritual song, because they're all spiritual from a sense of just a classical spiritual sense. A hymn is spiritual. In other words, it's hooked up with the Holy Ghost or it doesn't even count. A psalm. Is it spiritual? Otherwise, it's hooked up with the Holy Ghost. You know, it's not hooked up with the Holy Ghost. It doesn't count. Are you with me? Yeah. But Paul described what a spiritual song is in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. He says, what shall we do then? Well, I will pray with the understanding and I'll pray with the Spirit also. I'll sing with the understanding and I'll sing with the Spirit also. <laughs> I'm going to give place to what God said. Then I'm going to cooperate with that. I'm going to say that's got to be a part of the meeting. I want to be led by that. If I don't want, if I don't believe it, if I won't be willing to submit to it, then I'll never have the fruit or the results of it. Hallelujah. We want you to just go home and read the Bible. And what you read, we want you to come to church and do. Amen. I want you to go home and read the Bible. And what you read in the Bible, I want you to come to church and do. Hallelujah. Ha. Ah. I want you to go home and have a meeting with the living God, those things that he teaches you in the closet. I want you to come here and let him openly reward you. Amen. Because that's what, he would do. that's what he would do. Anybody, anyone who seeks him in spirit and truth in the closet, he rewards them openly. True. Nobody, nobody can stop that which Father has purposed to reward. Right. <laughs> uh, nobody, Amen. nothing, no power, no way. I so desperately want the Lord to use me. I'm desperate about God using me. I want to be used. I got to be used. I, I, I want to be right in the big, I want to be right in the middle, big middle of what he's doing. And I know that if I'm right in the big middle of what he's doing, I'm going to be used. So I'm going to get both of my desires. Amen. Amen. So are you. So are you. That's why you keep coming back here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. And then I see you walk in with a sad face. I hear you saying, help me. Do whatever you must do to help me. I got to get out of this prison. We're going to help you. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I'm, when I'm in a meeting and there's somebody that's lost, my whole attention is directed towards that person. It really is. Because God is. His whole attention is there. I'm in a meeting, and uh, there's someone who's sick. And especially if they've got a t terrible, debilitating disease. My whole attention is there. I'm after that. I'm after that. I want that. That's what God wants to do. When I'm in a meeting and I see one of God's saints and lights living in the shadows, living in darkness, depressed, unhappy, unthankful, that's my whole focus and my attention is there. I can't move away from it because God wants to make them happy. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to make you happy all the time. Hallelujah. <laughs> he wants to fill you up with his love all the time. What a, he wants you to have days. Come on, let's just live days of heaven on earth. Come on, let's just do it. Come on, let's do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Baby, let's just live in days of heaven on the earth. Why should we wait to die and go to heaven when we could live in heaven right now? No, I've already started. Amen. Amen. Yes, we have, haven't we? We choose to live in heaven. We choose to talk to the Holy Spirit. We choose, we choose to see him always before us. Yeah, we choose to believe that he is God. And that if what, in whatever dimension we're willing to believe him, he will make good on that faith. Yeah. He will make good on that relationship. If I choose to believe him for great things, he will do great things. If I choose to believe him only for small things, he will do small things. He will hook up with whatever we're willing to believe. With whatever we're willing to to demand, to make a demand, to place a demand upon the anointing, to make room for the anointing in our life, to build a place of habitation for God, to be able to know that we are translated from darkness into light, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the dear Son. 
from the power and the stronghold of Satan to oneness with Father. My, my, my. Ephesians, I'm going to read Ephesians. Hallelujah. How are you doing? How are you doing, Mama? How are you doing? Good. She's doing good. Happy, happy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bangalusha Rana. Lele Kira Nanda de Tisa de Calumbra. Milulu Mombruba Rimimingi de Perez de Tarade. Muranda Gere de Cotara Nambra Bapacanisha Kununu Kutakanakatea. You know how many people do not know how to cooperate with that today? For many different reasons, they don't know how to cooperate with that. Some believe that it's, some believe that it's not for today, that it's of the devil, that, it will pass, that that's such an expression passed away with the church. Well, it wasn't of the devil then, and it's not of the devil now. You don't go, you know, you don't go into bars and nightclubs and hear people going, So, I mean, the bottom line of it is, you know, all of that's just craziness. But it keeps them from being able to receive what God is doing because they believe something that is wrong. Amen. Huh? And then there is another segment of people that believe that it's an expression of the Holy Ghost, but you're not supposed to do it in church of all things. And if you do it in all church, you're supposed to do it so silently that no one else can hear it but you. I don't, you know. And it keeps him from being able to participate with what God is doing. There's all kinds of things like that that are going on that is in the framework of that which we choose to believe or wrong ideas or concepts that, that we have allowed to dominate our thinking that blocks us from moving forward with God. Why don't we just go ahead and get washed up and have our, our minds washed with the water of the word? Yeah. Our thoughts consumed with those things that the Spirit of the Lord is describing to us as we read the pages of this Bible and allow Him then to fill us with a thirsting and hunger that says that I must have these things that you have commanded me to have. Then everything changes. And then you hear that and then activates something in you. It activates. Residently exist in this here place. Because the Lord put tongues in the midst of his church. He put tongues. Prophecy is here. When I'm at Amukudera Stiatara, When I'm worshiping, I'm Oroma Sadana Nekadia Sutaya. Oh, Ramama Eshe. Here is Sudonia de Kadaya. Hallelujah. For you are a Sadayan and a Matuya to Kania Sadaya to Kadaya. Hallelujah. Oh, Sadaya. See, the Lord just wants you to hook up with that. Some of you are hooking up with that right now. Saya to Yananamaki Yashakata to Kadia Sata. Elamanakata. And what happens when you hook up with that? A greater flow, a greater increase in the anointing begins to be supplied to you because you plugged in, you know? Hallelujah. You, you, hallelujah. You got the pipe connected. And the, and the oil's flowing down right into you. When we begin to worship, when we sing, we, I, I never leave it, I never leave it in the hymn realm. And of course, I don't really like singing anything that didn't get capture, capture a move of God. It could be something where it's capturing a move of God of a person had individually. It's better when it captivates, it's a, it cap, captures a, a move of God that that a church had, that, 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 that many people had, but it's okay. Anything that captures the move of God, not something that was written in a, you know, in a sterile environment because I need to write a song because I'm trying to get it, I'm trying to get somebody to sing it. You know what I'm saying? Or I'm trying to, you, are you with me? Not to make merchandise out of it, but in a true and sincere heart. God to captivate a move, capture a move of God because I can feel the difference. Okay? So you have to understand there's some people who can feel things. They, they have discernment of things more than others have. But I'm always, even I'm, I'm not going to get stuck in the hymn. I'm going to go, I am going to go to the psalm. In my spirit, I'm going to go. I demand it. I place a demand on it. It's manifest will of the Father. It's been, uh, because it's a manifest will of the Father in the Word, it's also a manifest will of the Father in me because I have the spirit of the Son in me crying, Abba, Father. The spirit of the Son has brought the very nature and heart of God, so His will is now at work activated in me. Therefore, it is something that I'm not doing legally Realistically, I'm not doing out of some kind of a program. I'm not doing out of some kind of a ritual. I'm doing it because it's actually activated in me. I must go from the hymn to the prophetic song to the psalm. I must go and I must, it must advance 
into the spiritual song. Huh? Now, the more people we get with a, who increase in the anointing that gather around that, it's just like those logs I was saying. You go gather them, and they begin to be a bonfire. So I'm up on the platform the other night with Joe and Becky, who, have spent, who are seasoned also in this realm. And what's going to happen is I'm going to bust out. Huh? And what happens is this. I'll bust out. Uh, we'll go him with him. You can see it. Watch it. It goes him. The psalm, the prophetic song, you can see it. You could feel the atmosphere change unless you're in a prison. You could be bogged down in a prison. Your problems could be bigger to you than Jesus. That's an idol. It's an idol. Listen to me. It's an idol. Put it away from you. Deal with it as an idol. Deal with it as sin. Deal with it for the opposition. Deal with it as the enemy that it is. And you will be, then begin to be effective. If you, just, if you just make it something common or ordinary, something that's explainable, it will constantly be on you. And you're going to have to have eyes that are able to see into the realms of the spiritual and recognize that you're just not in a common place. It's not just common, ordinary events. It's not just something that you can uh, classify and justify. <laughs> are you listening to me tonight? And then, and then, and, I, and then I'll, I'll bust. And then it, it just, I, I say this because I want you to watch what I'm doing. I have received from heaven. I want to give it to you. I want you to see it in the scripture. I want you to then see it in my life. I want you to participate, it with, participate with it in the church because he is, he is cleansed and garnished his house. He has decorated it and fastened it with all kinds of his wonderful blessings and giftings as, as though they are great ornaments in the place. Fashion to beautify his, his, his house of worship. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Far better than the furniture you put in your living room or your bedroom. You want it to be nice living, nice furniture, best that you can do. The Father, boy, he's beautified his house with his glory that flows forth from his people. And then you'll see, just I'll bust into the mamranda sekereme, a spiritual song. You'll feel the intensity of it go up. And then out of that will come even a more dynamic, prophetic song that changes the atmosphere. Do, have you seen that? Have you noticed that? Have you participated with that? Can you say, I want to capture that. I want to have that. I want to reproduce that. I want that glory. You don't even need music when that's going on. You, 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 it's just there. That fills his house with something that he demands. It's not just something that's extras. It's the focal point of Father seeking such. It's that which David understood by the Spirit, so he then pulled together those uh, priests and ministers of the Levites who knew how to sing and knew how to play before the Lord skillfully. To have all this music and have all of this worship to praise Him. With songs and singing to bless Him. In His holy place. Oh, Something begins to happen there. In that atmosphere of worship. When the priests begin to sing. When those anointed of the Lord begin to lift up their voice. With a shout. And a cry. Of joy and rejoicing. You may not understand this. It may not make any sense to you. But God is moved by that. And there in that atmosphere. He begins to release and make known and manifest all that that was before. Hidden away. This is true. Hallelujah. We want every one of you to be able to participate with it. It's in the house. It's resident. When it begins to happen and you'll hook up with it, it'll become a part of you. And once it becomes a part of you, you'll have it for the rest of your life. It doesn't matter where God takes you, you'll have it. Otherwise, you'll have a dry, stale meeting that no very few people would even want to come to because it's boring. (laughs) The Bible without the Holy Ghost is boring. Uh, you with me? It's true. Huh? That's right. It's law without the spirit. Huh? It's true. It's just law. Just law. Relegated law. Huh? It's a letter that kills. 
as Paul said. It's a letter that kills and not the, not the spirit that gives life. I'm going with the spirit that gives life. Yeah. And then out of that, speaking forth this powerful word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, every word of God is pure and every word of God is pure, perfect and every good word of God is living. Don't get me wrong when I said what I said. I'm just talking about the word trying to, God's word trying to be delivered through the mouth of ritual and religion. It's nothing. It cannot be... Con the truth of it can never be conveyed. Huh? It's meaningless. It's a, story, it's a story that is told. Christ Jesus has brought life to the Word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He has. As the Word incarnate. Let your heart be captivated. Don't come worship God with you. Just try to worship God intellectually. Worship Him with, huh? worship him with your love. Love Him. Just stand there and say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Oh, God, I love you. I love you. I love you. Just say, and say, I don't feel it. Just do it till you feel it. You'll feel it. <laughs> Father, fill me with your love so I can love you. Just say that. And you get desperate enough. You get real enough, you feel you. And then you can go ahead and run around the house shout, screaming like, you know. Somebody just got touched with, with reality, touched with heaven. I'm still trying to find Ephesians chapter 3. It's pretty funny, isn't it? Thank you, Jesus. See, there's a feel to that. There's a feel. There's a feel to that. There's a realm, a realm, literally a realm of God manifested with that. Conveys a heavenly realm. It's the Holy Ghost speaking through me. Pouring forth his word. That excels to knowledge. It excels to revelation. Even when we're going. <laughs> it conveys a realm. Now, me <laughs> Ha 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 Praise us, now, it is suited. 
Now, it is sort of called a dita ba. It is a da 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 Nena, 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 lipoca, ishe, ke, kuna, ke, kalang, de, tak, to, la, ka, hak, to, soroni. Hala, man, le, eshi, shu, gara. Hala, ba, ki, etu. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, <clears throat> if we were to continue in that place, we'd get to a, we would go so deep in that realm of heaven that we would not be able to speak English for the rest of the evening. We would go to the, be put to bed. We wake up in the night. Possibly be 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 get about. So do the la da da na niya takadara. Hera. Possible be la dora. Pira no. Could it also so don? Could papa na nisi? Could you do saya? Possibly be be di ko romanso na yena na yini. Ha 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 could possibly be made of Lomond, Abrabaki, as you better be cut now, we you Ah, 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 ah. Oh, Ramama Manadaya. We get in on a Mondandi, could put a stony, could a masolo look at a little bit here today. Could it not? Could part could it not be? Hallelujah. In it, in it, in it, in it, in it, in it, in it. <laughs> there is a distinct possibility. <laughs> That, that, that you would wake up in the morning. <laughs> still, 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 <laughs> unable. <laughs> Just. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
continue to mangeli shiprana to speak in an English language. Borubara, sukar in English. Suda mangleyo, suda mangleyo shiprana ne. Mamba da la na na ne nega. Mamba la na ga ne mbaro shetara. Mamba la kadavra baba kaseli gebere. Mala la na 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 ne 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 bashe. Mamba la na na mana. Mama maha. Mama Mahana, Mama Mahana, Mama Mahana, Mama Mahana, say take it. Mama Mahana, Kade, Mora, baby, baby, get it, shake it. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Well, well. I do want to read this verse of scripture. <laughs> that I've been trying to read all night. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, you know. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your mighty presence. Oh, God. Oh, Holy Spirit. I thank you for your great authority in our lives. I thank you for your signs and wonders, for the manifestation of your power. Oh, blessed is your name, Lord. Oh, you know, eh. <laughs> uh, 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 hallelujah. I, I would love to do this on TBN or something. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Ha, ha. Let the power of God begin to touch people all over the United States of America. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To break off the ritual and the tradition. To begin to plug into a realm called the Spirit of Grace, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. Halamangasote. Ah. To break into a realm called the manifestation of the Spirit and live there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 manifestation of the spirit and live your life there forever to live your life in these signs and wonders to live your life in this realm of divine glory somebody say well I don't see the sense in it I don't see the sense in it it's not respectable What happens is when you get lost in this glory, you find a realm that you can easily access any time from that point on. That's the sense in it. I know many people have said, oh, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost and I lost the English language. You ought to lose it every day, baby. You need to lose it every day. <laughs> hey, you can't live on something that happened last year or 10 years ago. It's got to be fresh. It's a fresh wellspring. It's a continual flow from heaven. Woo! It will set your feet a dancing. It'll cause your heart to sing. It'll be an overflowing river far more than just a wellspring. Woo! Oh, Vrabadeo, oh, Vrasotosa, 
Valle. Susiera Sate, Susiera Sate, Susiera Bakasara, Mandaya Sabakosera. Oh, ha 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 ha. Sira Bay, 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 Ura baba basate. Ura baba. Ura baba basitanane. Oh yes. A new heart. 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 In Jesus name. In Jesus name. The miracle of a new heart. The miracle of a new heart in the grace's body. The miracle of a new heart. Saye, Faye, Sayato. Su, Mande, Diso, Mandai. In Jesus' name. A new heart in this body. A new heart. A new heart that doesn't need a pacemaker. A new heart. A brand new one. A brand new one, Subraman de Keshaya. A brand new heart that works properly. Ura sara da dekiri bahalalalamara. Somebody said, "What's the sense of it?" This is where everybody that I know has found the flow of the Holy Ghost that results in signs and wonders and miracles. The results in lost, the lost are being found. The results in the blind seeing, the deaf hearing, the crippled walking, nations being changed, revival sweeping, a great awakening coming. Oh God. Oh Lord, we ask you, oh God, our thirst, our hunger left, oh God. Our desperation, I'm desperate. See, some people. Some people can see this and they go, my, he's mad, he's mad, he's beside himself. Look at the strange faces. Oh, he shouldn't even do that in public. What a misrepresentation. How awful. But when Father sees it, it's so beautiful to him. And I'm just desperate and hungry for more. All I want is that which pleases the Father. I'm not interested in the ritual of men. I'm not interested in that which pleases men, for that cannot satisfy. It leads only to a way of destruction. It can never lead to Him. I'm only interested in what the Holy Ghost has done and what He's doing when He turns men who otherwise were afraid, hiding behind the closed doors into those that are as... Drunken men, overwhelmed with his presence, filled up with his divine goodness and glory, uh, changes them into those who act and function just like Jesus Christ, the Lord, in signs and wonders and power and manifestation of the Spirit as they represent the only true and living God, Jesus Christ, the Lord. Hallelujah. The sense in it is when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, you find a place that you want to go every day. Hallelujah. Uh, the sense in it, when you lose the, the English language, you find continually that continuous prayer of the Spirit. When you are captivated and raptured in joy unspeakable and ecstatic laughter, you find it so easy to always be joyful. But until you're baptized in this realm, it seems like it's impossible to find. Maybe only rarely. But all you need to do is hunger. All you need to do is thirst. When I'm around anybody, in any move of the Spirit... Man, I tell you right now, I just got to dive in. I'm not going to be left without. I'm not wondering. I'm not wondering. I'm taste of everything. All the good things of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I don't know what Hallelujah. I'm going to read us. You just remain standing. Let me just start on my case. There's deeper depths. There's higher heights. I want you to understand something tonight. You do not have access into the realm of heaven, into the realms of the throne room of God, into the realms of these things that we're talking about, except by the Holy Spirit. We know exactly what the Holy Spirit is going to be doing when we hook up with Him. One of those things is this wonderful expression of the language of the Spirit. Those other, the other things, you can ask any Orthodox Jew about what you, he has to do in order to be able to interact with the presence of God. And he's going to tell you he's got to find a place of ecstatic joy. He must find a place of ecstatic joy. They can't find it. It only belongs to those who are in the presence of the Lord. It is presence is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Wonderful joy. With it comes love and peace. <laughs> With it, with it comes all those things that the Bible talks about. People want to just make it religion. They want it to be religious. They want it to be ideology. They want to be something that's talked about. Something that they're looking forward to having. After that they die and go to heaven. But that's not what God has given his word for. That is not what God has given this miracle life. This abundant life. This life of God for. That's not what he has poured out his Holy Spirit. He's poured it out so that now you and I can understand that we yet this moment in time live in the the kingdom of a the kingdom age we live in the kingdom of the lord jesus christ we live in this very powerful place right now as heirs of god and co-inheritors with the lord jesus christ so that we now may be his representatives so that we may now be his proof providers so that we may now be his witnesses that he did indeed raise up from the dead and has the keys of death and hell he alone is the one who is the prince of life he is the only one by whom men may be saved you and i and but only by the Holy Ghost, only by being baptized in the Holy Ghost, even as they were on the day of Pentecost, in which they lost that English language, that Hebrew language. They lost that Aramaic or whatever it was they were more commonly speaking. They lost that language. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. And from that, God promoted them into being able to speak of things that they knew not. Then all of a sudden, the doctrine of the word began to be men manifest. And out of the doctrine of the word, out of the speakers, a doctrine comes by the spirit just like prophecy. Peter said, this is that which the prophet Joel spake. Never had it been spoken like Peter spoke it that day. And so it is to this day. Today, and now we are able by the spirit of the living God to make known what was said by the prophets. That's the teaching gift. Hallelujah. But only by the spirit. Only by the same power that issues forth out of our lips like rivers of living water as this intercession of God the Holy Ghost begins to glorify Jesus for this, for this is the means by which he's glorified. Because through it, we begin to be promoted and excelled. The atmosphere begins to become supercharged with faith in the presence of God and miracles begin to ha happen. Hallelujah. Grace gets a new heart instead of a new pacemaker. People who have been bound up by fear get delivered. Those who've been sad and hopeless can be filled or, or become filled with confidence and faith. Hallelujah. It is going to happen in the other way. In Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 21. On the very end of verse 19. When Paul said to know the love of God which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Oh, hang on to that verse of scripture because you must understand it's key to your relationship, your personal relationship with him. It's key to how you go, begin to participate and function in the body of Christ and and, and cooperate with the Holy Ghost. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Above all that we can think or ask or think. According to the power that works within us. 
according to the power that's right now at in that is operable in us for the self-same purpose of us stepping in to all the fullness of God. Why? Verse 21 tells you the results. So that God the Father, he is the him pronoun in verse 21, may be receive glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, worlds, worlds without end. World without an end. Early in this same chapter, Paul said, Now by the church is made known to the principalities, to the angelic hosts, the wisdom of God and the glory of God by the church, by what's happening in this place right here tonight, by the heart and passion. That we have in our souls. Been placed there by the Spirit of the living God. To see this region change. To see this nation change. To see the glory and manifestation of Christ Jesus made known in the earth in our generation. When God begins to move in our lives like he wants to. You won't have to worry about the falsehoods, the false things, the things that ran interference, the things that tried to eclipse the move of God, the fakey things that try to stand out of the way. Because when Father begins to speak, I'm going to tell you right now, the, many people in the world will hear his voice because he has many people out there, many sheep that have not heard his voice yet. Many that they, their souls will they'll die and go to hell unless they hear his voice. Father ones, and they know, they know the difference from religion. They've heard the voice of religion. You and I are going to have to advance out of the voice of religion. Amen. And out of the voice of ritual. Amen. And a knowledge of God without the intimacy with him that produces the manifest presence of his divine glory. Amen. Into this di- deeper relationship. The height. The breadth. The length. The death. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Mm. Hallelujah. La sotina, God. I pray you go home and you just practice being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Practice being, being filled with the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hall, hall, and when you do that, you'll be practicing word of knowledge. You'll be practicing miracles. Hallelujah. You'll be practicing prophecy. Hallelujah. You'll be practicing word of faith, word of wisdom. You'll be practicing all those things that belong to the things of heaven. And if you stay with it, it won't be long. You begin to hear the voice of the Lord speaking to you. It'll be very, very real. It won't be necessarily audible. But nonetheless, it'll be real. He'll make you to know things that you are impossible for you to know of yourself that you've got to go look up in the Bible yeah. and go, my Father, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. I'm on that safe. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm-mm-mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you that you fill Paulina's mouth with your word. To be, the ability to speak your word by prophecy, by revelation, and by knowledge. Father, I thank you for the special anointing of grace that you put upon your daughter, Destiny, called to go and declare all these wonderful things that you have done to people who've never heard, and even to those some who have heard. Thank you, Father, for the increase. Thank you for the boldness. Thank you for the confidence. Thank you for the passion. 
it. Thank you for the certainty. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, I commission you by the name of Jesus Christ to be <laughs> instant in season and out of season. <laughs> to preach. To preach this good word of God. To declare this good news. But the Holy Ghost is with you and in you. And it's the spirit of your Father which speaks and not you. Amen. Hallelujah. So we expect to be hearing what God's going to be saying. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Father wants to distribute gifts. Father wants to distribute. He wants to distribute. God, the Holy Spirit, wants to distribute. It is within the, this atmosphere, within this context, that gifts are distributed. It is within the it is within the atmosphere and the context of worship and praise, a place that we want to always lead you, that gifts are made manifest by the Holy Spirit. He gives them in manifestation to every person. To every person. Everyone. That means you tonight, every single person here, had an opportunity. There was gifts of the Spirit being manifested to you. And the Lord was very specific about it so that people didn't categorize it as something that it is not. He made it very clear and detailed what they look like. Hallelujah. And I praise the Lord that most every one of you were able to participate in the manifestation of the Spirit with the speaking of other languages, Holy Ghost languages. The Lord wants you to excel. That, that gift is supposed to then excel. Give yourself to the things of the Spirit, and they will excel in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. On Brunste. Hallelujah. Brahmane. What's up, dear? What's up? Somebody's got a problem with your right hip. Who has a problem with the right hip? Elsa? Elsa, do you have a problem with your right hip? Who has a problem with the right hip? Anyone? Okay, come. Father, we thank you right now for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Right now. Sandra's going to be healed. That hip's going to be healed. Rada, you say. Yes. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Monglaste. Mondeviti. Now, Ruthiana, I know you've been having some problems with your hip. We can come, come here. We're going to pray for you. Michaela, put your hands towards heaven. The anointing's here to heal. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Enough. Totally restored. Now, in Jesus' name, in the name of the living God, you foul spirit of hell, messing with my baby. So I said, oh, that's just natural. No, no, it ain't nothing natural. Everything's spiritual. And things are only natural to the natural mind, to the natural men, and they deceived. Do you understand that? Hallelujah. Huh? What else? The chip has been limping along like a wind animal. But the doctor hasn't given up in his church. And the therapy is Holy Ghost inspired. So it has not have Amen. Just an attitude of what will be, will be, but to see the church restored. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the therapy of the Holy Spirit right now. Is bringing it, healing to your church that has been wounded and limping along. <laughs> but I want you to know the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is alive and well. And it might be as, as, it, as it were that his church and those who are fiery and have matured in the anointing are like 
burning coals and burning logs scattered out across a vast field. But watch what happens. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Watch, watch what happens. Father has a way of bringing all of that together and igniting a fire that cannot be put out and cannot be denied. And he's going to do it because, see, he's God. And he wants this more than anyone else. He's just opening up the door of opportunity for us to cooperate with him. And if we don't, he'll find somebody else. But I'm, I'm, I've determined he ain't he doesn't have to look anywhere else. Amen. I'm ground zero right here. Amen. Hallelujah. Right here, Father. I'm what you've been looking for. I'm what you've been. And each person needs to determine that in their heart, where is your passion at? How do you then become those who cooperate with the Holy Ghost, who come into a place where you come under the complete influence. People are afraid of the word control, but in many ways it is that's the right word because he's master, okay? We're doing everything we're doing by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is going to happen. Yes. You hear me? Yes. In this place. Yes. In this building, yes. Okay. Elsa, come here. Yeah. Michaela wants to pray for you. She says that the Lord has a restoration for you for everything that's been lost. You're in need right now, right? You're in need of a job. You're in need of provision. Is that correct? Is that correct? Well, then we're going to get it right now. Thank you, Father. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing of provision. Go ahead and get the joy. Go ahead and rejoice. You don't have any problem. You don't have any problem rejoicing and, get, and being joyful and, and happy and blessed. And so, in the name of Jesus, I command you to prosper. The door of provision opens up to you. Hallelujah. I see finances coming from unforeseen places. Some kind of an inheritance or something. No. Hallelujah. Just watch, right? Thank you, Jesus, for your love, for your great provision. Play the song, Here I Am, Take All of Me. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to grab the person's hand that's by you. If you know them and like them a whole lot, you go ahead and hug them. Just with your arm around them. And just with your arm. Father, I thank you for healing in this place tonight. Father, I thank you for healing in this place tonight, oh God. Father, I thank you for healing in this place tonight, oh God.
Well, just find a bunch of people around you, hug them, tell them that you love them, bless them in Jesus' name. Don't let up on flowing in the Holy Ghost. <laughs>